Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Thank you so much for joining us for another session of 99 Names of Allah. Whether you are joining us here in the space or you are watching this live or you're watching this in the future, inshallah, wherever you might be, you're most welcome and we appreciate you joining us. So last time we covered five names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so five beautiful names that were uh, indicating this this aspect of oneness, this aspect of oneness and in one whom there is and nothing else. And these names were Al-Wahid, Al-Ahad, Al-Samad, Al-Qadir, Al-Muqtadir. Of course, Al-Wahid and Al-Ahad referring to the uh, the one, the one and only Al-Samad referring to the eternal, the everlasting, the one who's always present, the, the lasting and Al-Qadir and Al-Muqtadir, the one who is capable of everything, the powerful, and then Al-Muqtadir, the one who has power, who then is determines everything. We talked about how the Mu uh, prefix indicated the kind of like the doer in, in this sense, in, in, in the Arabic, that uh, you have the, the powerful, the, the one who is capable of everything, and then you have the one who actually puts that power to, to work there. Um, so inshallah, with this, we'll go ahead and we will uh, transition to our next names. Before we do that, we'll do the Asma'il Husna and the recitation, but I wanted to let you know for today's names, we'll be covering four names today, and both of them are pairs of each other. So the first set is Al-Muqaddim and Al-Mu'akhir. Uh, Al-Muqaddim is the one who accelerates, the one who puts, for, uh, puts first, um, who fosters, and then you have Al-Mu'akhir, which is the postponer and the one who uh, delays. And you have al-awal and al-akhir, that you have the first, the beginning, the origin, and you have al-akhir, the last and the end. So both of these names are pairs of each other. And so inshallah, we're gonna go ahead and get started here with the Asma'il Husna. So let me share my screen. <clears throat> All right, and just just to know we, we we are now you know well into the the 70s of our of our names and so we just have just under or around 20 or so left and so just uh many of these names i hope have become more familiar to you like i said this is by no means a way for everyone to just memorize them or anything like this but just to become familiar so when you see how far we've gotten just see how how far you've gotten how far we have gotten and just uh looking at these different names and being able to embody them or being able to bring them into the session. So lift them up, recognize that uh, how much you've covered and give yourself a little bit of a pat on the back, inshallah. So let us go ahead and begin. Bismillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa hu ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Al-Malik al-Quddus al-Salam al-Mu'min al-Muhaymin al-Aziz al-Jabbar المتكبر الخالق الباري المصور الغفار القهار الوهاب الرزاق الفتح العليم القابض الباسط الخافض الرافع المعز المذل السميع البصير الحكم العدل اللطيف الخبير الهليم العظيم الغفور الشكور العلي الكبير الحفيظ المقيت الحسيب الجليل الكريم الرقيب المجيب الواصي الحكيم الودود المجيد الباعث الشهيد الحق الوقيل القوي المتين الولي الحميد المحسي مبدي المعيد 
المهيي المميت الحي القيوم الواجد الماجد الواحد الأحد الصمد القادر المقتدر المقدم المؤخر الأول الآخر الظاهر الباطن الوالي المتعالي البر التواب المنتقيم العفو الرؤوف مالك الملك ذو الجلال والإكرام المقصد الجامع الغني المغني المانع الضار نافع نور الهادي البديع الباقي الوارث الرشيد الصبور. So as we begin with these names, inshallah, we see that the end is in sight. But as always, there's so much more to these names than we can do justice to in these sessions or in these recitations. But let us begin, inshallah, with today's names. As I mentioned, we have four names today. The first we'll start off with, there are two pairs. And the first pair we'll start off is Al Muqaddim and Al Muakhir. So Al Muqaddim is the one who accelerates, the one who promotes or brings forward the one who puts first the one who fosters all these these meanings and these connotations that you have um you know this this includes not just moving things forward but also granting advancement the the one who expedites things and the one who just promotes and pu pushes forward and so sometimes we see this in the connotation of the one who promotes uh the the creation the humanity to promoting them to higher ranks, to promoting them uh, throughout this life and through the next life. And so the root of al-muqaddim is a means to proceed. It has, it has a meaning uh, of proceeding, of arriving, of coming, reaching, to being ancient, to being old, to also prepare, to be ready, to keep ready, to provide and to go forward. And, you know, when, when al-muqaddim finds an echo within us, we recognize things that things do happen at the right moment sometimes we hear that we have we hear the generic phrase that like everything happens for a reason or whatnot but this 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 you know takes us back and this actually says how things happen at the right moment that it, it talks about how within allah's plan whether things have been expedited whether things have been delayed each thing has its fixed moment and it teaches us how to deal with time as well as being able to confront the realities of our impatience that come around with time. Sometimes we're really anxious and we want something to happen. Uh, and then as we'll see in the next name, we'll want something not happen. We'll want it to hold off. But with certain things, we'll want it to happen, whether it is, uh, you know, it's something in life that that we are anticipating if it's uh, if it's if it's some kind of like relationship or whatever it might be that we're waiting for, if it's maybe the release of something, whatever it might be, we are really we sometimes get get impatient with it and we we want to bring it about before it can actually it actually takes forth and so this happens to all of us in which we want to see something come forth but we're we just have to hold on to it because we have to remember that each thing is from Allah each thing is by Allah's permission and each thing has its fixed time that it will happen but that this name is the one that helps move things forward that helps bring things forward and so Apart from that, this name helps enable us to go ahead step by step without losing that concept of certainty and truth and without us leaving that centeredness in reality, that centeredness and that certainty that everything indeed is within Allah's hand. So it gives us a concept of not having to rely on ourselves as much that there is a concept that we, we do believe that Allah has these things in Allah's hands and has these things prescribed. It doesn't mean we don't tie our own camel. It doesn't mean you don't do your things um, just because, you know, you have, uh, you, you, you've got, you know, five, however many like, you know, things, the years of study left, if you're like doing graduate education, if you're doing some kind of like your bachelor's, whatever it might be, like, you know, you're, you're, you're wanting to get through it, you want to get through it all. And if you have a terrible class, like OCHEM or just something else that is not a very, 
uh, fun class to go through and you want to get things over. You just want to get things over. Of course, like, you know, you could just not attend any of the classes and then just get, just fail and everything, but you have to put in a little bit of the work as well. You have to be present. You have to show up, but know that Allah has appointed certain things for their, their certain moments. And so you want to be there as well, but you can't just, we can't just as if with any of the names, just be like, Hey, you know, Allah is this. And so I'm not going to do any of this. No, you know, as the process and taught us, you got to tie your camel and then, you know, you take forth from there. And so the name with al muqaddim I mentioned pairs with al muakhir The um, al muakhir can be translated as the postponer, the one who puts after the one who delays. And both of these names really help us when you think about the one who accelerates, but then you have the one who postpones. And both of these names move us back and forth on that level of time, but it still allows us to sit, sometimes sit in that discomfort because there are moments where we are naturally anxious. We're naturally anticipating something and we want it to move forward. We want it to just kind of get ahead. And there's other moments where we're just like, things need to slow down. Things need to hold up. Things need to be there. And so this causes us to kind of be in that middle, in the middle between these names and to be able to really talk about it, talk to us about how do we deal with time? How do we deal with this discomfort, this impatience that we have, whether it's anticipating something or it's wanting to remove something and delay something. So these names really help us get in a, get in a frame outside of thinking that we have control over everything. So when we cease control of certain things, like I said, not everything. You don't want to seize control of every single thing. But when we cease control, thinking that we can control every single thing, we, we reduce that anxiety. We, we, we come to know that Allah in, in, in Allah's self controls these things, controls when things will occur, but also controls if some things need to be pushed, if some things need to be held back. That's within Allah's hands, within Allah's uh, framework that's been set up. We are merely kind of going through and doing what we can. But uh, hopefully it helps us cease some of that uh, level of control that we may think we may have and by default bring on some anxieties that we we probably don't need right now in our lives. So going to al muakhir as I mentioned, it's the postponer, the one who delays, but uh, this name helps us realize that everything, as I mentioned, happens at the right time, but then also everything finishes at the right time. That it helps us to take that step back. And we'll come back to that, that uh, al muakhir is that one who delays, that one who postpones, the one who puts off advancement. So you see the, the not the opposite, but you see a compliment to al muqaddim And you have the one who holds back or keeps something to put it in its proper place. You have the one who causes something to lag behind. The one who not only delays or holds back, but by uh, Allah's will, one who can... Uh, detain the one who can restrict, and so sometimes we see this manifest in the in 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 the tradition and and commentary of in terms of the afterlife that uh, you know the day of judgment, the day of judgment, and then uh, the the reward that is to come for for folks of of, of jannah of, of being admitted to to the gardens. Some folks being held back, some folks being like, wait, you know, you're not ready for that. So just not just that, but we look at different areas in life where we think we're ready for something. And al muakhir is like, no, not exactly. You're not you're not you're not really ready for that. Uh, and 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 bringing us to to a new life, bringing us to something new, but holding us holding us back and having that having that restraint for us. And so. You know, in, in both cases, whether we have al muqaddim of expediting, al muakhir of postponing and delaying, calm and silence can grow in us along with confidence that everything is in Allah's hand. But on the flip side, anxiety can grow in us, impatience grows in us, just unrestlessness, restlessness grows in us. And so we want to be able to get into a space where we can promote that calm and promote that silence but also promote that confidence that everything is in Allah's hands and we can be okay with that. We can be with some of us are type A, some of us are like, you know, type ones that just need to have uh, things under control. And if we don't, it, it, it makes us, it has somatic distress. It has so many different things that it manifests in us. And, and it's part of that heart work that we do. The, again, these names that we're covering are part of healing. There's healing to these names. And so when we lift up al muqaddim when we lift up al muakhir and we see that we might have an anxiety with holding off on something or giving agency to another entity regarding our time or regarding how we do it. 
it talks about how we need we have some hard work we can do we have some areas we can improve where it's okay for us to let go of some things uh and especially if it's control of full things or thinking that we have control of time or anything like that and so this name has the same root as the name we'll get to at the end here the same root as al akhir it has the meanings of delaying to put off to postpone to adjourn to hold up to uh the, to draw out to keep waiting but the conclusion as well as the ultimate and the last and allah gives that which uh he uh, that allah holds back um for some people but then also accelerates that which he holds back for other people and so you 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 see that these are certain things these are this is our these are names that have a attribute beyond just you know the connotation of the day of judgment or punishment or anything like that 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 you know the um the eschatological the post uh post eternity post life the the end of times all that stuff we sometimes think that that that's what what's what it is that uh, allah's just holding off you know the uh the gardens or you know is accelerating us to go to the gardens or holding us off things like that but there's also just in terms of the practical there's the practical in the sense that these names teach us patience they teach us to accept that white that which may be accelerated that which may be delayed and ultimately help us exercise that discipline that discipline not just within our physical selves but our spiritual and our faith self because there's so many times in our faith in our faith tradition in our lenses as muslims we we think that something needs to happen now because we think that it is the right time if we want to marry somebody if we want to start something new we feel like now nah, this is the right time i know it and i'm going to do everything i can to push it through and sometimes things get delayed sometimes you know the family's not ready sometimes it's it's if you're marrying someone who's converted or if you're if you're in the mix of a a, a non-traditional marriage sometimes there's things that can hold it up and oftentimes we want to push some things forward we want to be like no like i need to get this through or uh say no like you know i want to really hold off on some things and al muqaddim al muakhir help facilitate that help help take that into their hands into that hand of allah to hold these things to their proper measure and so for us it can be really anxiety bearing but it also helps us know in moments like that in moments when we really do want to push something and it's not going forward or we might want to hold off on something or not yet that it's going to be held off that we know that in both of these accounts Allah is the one who will bring about who will accelerate if need something needs to get done at a timely manner Allah inshallah will be the one to bring that forward in through al muqaddim or allah will hold it back until it's the right time sometimes a job isn't right for us sometimes we don't get into the school we want sometimes we don't get into the programs we want or get any of the things that we're looking for and we miss out on some of that and we miss out on those things we think we've already missed out but we have faith in al muakhir that allah has set that or set something better aside and for a later time and so this name gives us really that shoulder to lean on really that uh just just that rest to take within allah without having to cause ourselves so much anxiety or distress there and so we really do help ourselves exercise that that discipline there the next two names that we are covering the last two names that we're covering here is uh, al awal which is the first the beginning the origin and al akhir the last and the end and so sometimes in in the christian tradition you have the alpha and the omega uh you have the the one that is the, you know the first letter of the alphabet you have the last but just symbolically how it's meaning i think in 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 the bible it says you know i am the alpha and the omega and so you have the first and the last so it's an interesting parallel the al awal al akhir that you have the first and the last in 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 the islamic tradition as well of course and so this is a first that is without a beginning so we you don't have a point at which allah began or which allah was there everything before creation before eternity was allah before there was anything there was allah and after there's anything there is allah and so allah in this in this name is pre eternity so we have eternity but we have pre eternity and so we it's hard to even conceptualize what that what that would look like but we talked about this a little bit with al wahid and al ahad that there's just one the one and only and the one that always was before anything and so the root of this word al awal has uh, the meanings of first 
foremost, most important, chief, main, first part, beginning, and primary, original. And so all things in this name, what it reminds us is that all things have that go through that cycle of life. They go through a birth, they go through a death, and they go through some type of portionment of life, however short it might be, however long it might be. And it has that in the material and in the spiritual sense as well. And what we see with this name is that despite all this, the one consistent that is always there is Al-Awwal. You have Al-Awwal, the first that was there before all this, and then you have Al-Akhir, the one at the end. So it really completes that circle. But what it gives us is an increased awareness of eternity. It gives us an increased awareness of Allah that each of these things come and go. The, the, the cycle of the world comes and go. You can watch a YouTube video, which is a time lapse of just a, 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 you know, all these areas just kind of changing, whether it's a forest or whether it's a city, whether it's so many different things. And you can just see within just a matter of seconds how fast things are changing. Trees are going up, trees are coming down, forests are changing, all these different things are uh, going on. And so you see that each of these things has a cycle. Each of these things comes and goes, comes and goes, comes and goes. But the one consistent that's in there, one consistent that there, that's there at the beginning of all this, at the beginning of this was Al-Awwal. And so what, what we mentioned was that before anything, Allah was, and nothing was with Allah. And this name precedes all these things of birth and awakening. And it ties to the name Al-Akhir, the last, the end, this not just pre-eternity, now you have post-eternity, that you have the one who remains after all of creation has passed away. After everything is said and done, Al-Akhir is at the end. This is just beyond past, past, past. And so Al-Akhir is all the way there as well. But it connotates that meaning of Allah of the, you have so many meanings. We talked about as samad the everlasting, the eternal. This kind of just defines as well, lifts up the fact that and emphasizes that before anything, there was Allah. After everything, there will be Allah. And that in As-Samad also, Allah is eternal. Allah is there. So this just emphasizes that, that, uh, that significance that Allah has in the beginning and in the end. And so uh, as we look at this name, we look at that it has that same root as Al-Muakhir that we just covered. And that Allah will be at the end, Al-Akhir, in a future sense, because nothing will be with Allah. And so it's really, as I mentioned, symbolic of a perfect circle, symbolic of a perfect circle in the sense that you have, uh, you have a circle without a beginning or an end, a just something that's continuous and continuous and continuous. Uh, and this, this concept that we think that Allah is the end and there's, that's it, that's done. No, the end is in Allah. Allah goes on. Allah is there, but the end is there. And so it gives us a sense of like, things will continue. There, there's, there's much more to life than just maybe the, the, the small things we might be worrying about here because we, we look at it on the spectrum of uh, Allah's time and not so much on, on, on our finite time here. But Al-Awal and Al-Akhir are not just in that space and time. They're actually beyond the space and time. It's the eternal beginning and eternal end. As I mentioned, life and everything in between has a fixed limit, has a fixed approach. Everything outside has a, uh, everything outside is under Al-Awal, Al-Akhir, and that it goes on because Allah is after these things. And so the Prophet ﷺ lifted up a uh, concept of this that, his being, referring to Allah, his being is eternal. Nothing precedes the existence or outlasts the eternity. So you can just, it's, it's re, just re-emphasizing this. And so everything that exists, that happens then in our life, it has a meaning and a purpose. Each of us, we, we, we sometimes think that, oh, just because, uh, you know, Allah will be there and nothing else will be there. Uh, you know, and I'm just this finite creature. Everything I do like, I guess, in the grand scheme of things doesn't matter. Like, you know, I'm just a little sliver on this on this slice of the timeline of everything. And so I, I don't matter, like, especially me, like as a human, I'm just a blip. No, it actually helps us see that everything we do has a meaning and purpose, because you have such a grand God, you have such a God that is not only before all that was is everlasting is after all that was, but you see the emphasis we've given to each of these names and how it relates to each of us, that Allah created the creation and everything, and especially us 
with these divine sparks. So much was put into you, so much was given to you, so much care and tenderness was given to creating you that your actions are not just meaningless. Your existence is not just meaningless. Whatever you do is not meaningless. It has a purpose, it has a meaning. And so it gives us comfort that despite what Allah is in, in this just this wide scheme of things, Allah put in all that care, put in all that effort and tells, still tells in the Quran that I am nearer than your jugular vein, that when my servants call upon me, tell them I am near. Still, you, you just, we, we, we see the dichotomy in this. It's like the entire sky coming uh, and just being bottled up and just being able to, uh, you, you can grasp it all, you can see it all, you can feel it all, it's all there. And in the similar light that Allah gives that much laser focus to each of the creation. And so it helps us see that everything we do does have a meaning and purpose. It's not just like, well, I don't matter. Like, you know, I'm just so insignificant. And then when you look at the galaxy maps that you see sometimes on Discovery Channel, it's like, oh, here's the earth. Oh, here's this. And then, oh, hey, here's Andromeda. Here's like something else. And so you're like, man, we're just really insignificant. But this shows you the opposite of that. It shows the opposite that you are significant because look how much, look how big everything is, but look how much care and focus has been given to you. And so as we conclude with these names, Al-Awal and Al-Akhir give human beings that possibility to amplify our deeds, amplify our beings within this eternal circle. Al-Akhir follows every end, follows every conclusion. And so it tells us that anything we do, you probably heard this in, in the movie Gladiator, that uh, what you do in life echoes in eternity. And so what we do in this world, what we do here, it doesn't just fizzle away here. It has eternal implications. It has implications beyond when we finish because Allah is there on the other side as well. And so the term akhirah of the hereafter, the, the life that is to come is comes from the same root. And so as I mentioned, our actions have consequences, however we wanna cut it. And so we find in this name, we find in al-awal in the beginning, we find an end in the beginning, and in the in al akhir we find a beginning in the end. So when we see al awal, we see uh, not just an end in this name, but we see a beginning in the end in al akhir that it gives us a moment to restart, to start again. So inshallah, as we close out with these names, we will do a dhikr. But these names remind us that no matter how small we are, no matter how small we perceive ourselves to be, that at the end of the day our actions do matter. How we carry ourselves, how we interact with one another, how we treat the creation, how we treat oneself, how we treat ourselves, it matters because you have in Allah, the one who is before, after, and is there. And these actions do carry forward. So inshallah, let us, let us conclude with a uh, dhikr of these names. We'll actually do um, each of these names once, and then at the end uh, of, of it, we'll do the pair. So Al-Muqaddim, Al-Muakhir, we'll do Al-Muqaddim and Al-Muakhir, and then Al-Awal, Al-Akhir, and then Al-Awal, Al-Akhir at the end. So let's do that. Bismillah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al Muqaddim, Al Muqaddim, Al Muqaddim, Al Muqaddim, Al Muqaddim, Al Muqaddim, Al Muqaddim. Al Muakhir, Al Muakhir, Al Muakhir, Al Muakhir, Al Muakhir, Al Muakhir, Al Muakhir. Ya muqaddim, ya muakhir, ya muqaddim, ya muakhir, ya muqaddim, ya muakhir, ya muqaddim, ya muakhir. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. 
الأول 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 الآخر 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 يا أول يا آخر يا أول يا آخر يا أول يا آخر يا أول يا آخر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله 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 لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله 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 So brothers and sisters, inshallah, we will see you all tomorrow for another session. But remember that we take these names and each of these names are a means of healing. Each of these names are a means of seeing how much effort, how much just divine sparks you contain, how much Allah invested in this creation, how much is within us, and that nothing we do is just for, for no small purpose we there has lasting implications and so we're able to see that despite how grand and how large and how infinite Allah is that as a finite creation how valued we have been within the eyes of Allah so we lift that up and inshallah we will see you all tomorrow for another session jazakallah khair for coming assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh